You're watching NBC3 News at 5. Good evening. Welcome to our special Your Town Live series. This week we're featuring the area of Fayetteville and Manlius. And tonight we have the pleasure of broadcasting live from Green Lake State Park. And we're very fortunate. No rain, a couple clouds in the sky, but really a nice Friday evening. Plenty warm outside tonight. Yeah, we've been keeping our fingers and our toes crossed all week long, hoping for some good weather. And boy, did it deliver a nice night out here, a beautiful, cool breeze and a lot of kids behind us. There they are. They're having a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, they're, they're having a good time. It's a great place to bring the family to go for a swim. You take a walk, uh, all kinds of things you can do in this wonderful state park. So let's give you a sense as to where the Fayetteville commu uh, Manlius communities are located. They're just on the east side of Onondaga County, if you're not familiar. The village of Fayetteville has been at the center of trade and business, really, since the first settlers arrived back in 1792, thanks in part to the Erie Canal, which runs through it. The town of Manlius is, homes, is home to the villages of Manlius, Fayetteville, and Manoa. Now we're looking at Green Lake, one of two glacial lakes here on the park property. Green Lake goes down about a mile that way. You can boat on it, walk the trail. And then once you get past that lake, there's Round Lake, which is actually a, a national historic landmark too for its unique nature. Uh, it features uh, Green Lakes here where you can do all kinds of recreation. You know, there's an 18 hole golf course. In fact, Nico and I were playing up there this morning. We're going to talk about that later on. The beachfront and park provide endless entertainment during the summer and then even in the winter it's beautiful here uh, you can snowshoe you can cross-country ski enjoy just about everything winter has to offer yeah but this is my family's favorite place to come uh, we enjoy the park here it's a great place to go swimming or even just get a little exercise take a run around the lake yeah really a lot of fun and as we said the weather's holding out on this Friday evening that's really good news meteorologist Craig Flint is back at the station tonight keeping an eye on that weekend forecast yeah for Craig us. how are things looking as we inch closer to that weekend that I think it looks pretty good, guys. Now we're going to head out to Green Lakes where Matt and Megan are. You guys on the beach with your shoes on? <laughs> uh, I was just well, thinking we should take our yes, shoes off. Justin, you yes. bring up a good point. Maybe <laughs> as the broadcast progresses, we'll get back to bare feet. So, That's right. But right now, the shoes are on. We have much more to come live from our Yorktown broadcast from Fayetteville Manlius tonight. They are majestic creatures, and you can find them right in the village of Manlius. We're going to take you live to the Swan Pond, a family favorite for sure. Well, it's really going to be fun. We also take you out on the Erie Canal on Kayak, a great way to experience nature here in the Fayetteville and Manlius area. When we continue with our Yorktown broadcast, Cast live in a moment. Welcome back to our live Your Town broadcast in uh, Fayetteville at Green Lake State Park tonight. We're highlighting all things that make this community so special. And you know, it is no secret that Fayetteville Manlius students are highly motivated. In fact, the district is consistently ranked among the top districts in the state. Uh, among last year's graduating class, 86% went on to a four-year college. 11 went on to Ivy League schools. In addition to stellar academic rankings, the district also has a strong arts program and sports teams do extremely well in music and art. Our programs are second to none, um, but our character education program, I, for me, is what really puts us, I think, over the top from a lot of other districts. Wellwood Middle School principal Melissa Corbin points to the district's programs to encourage qualities like kindness, generosity, and leadership, like the Day of Giving back in June, where we found students giving back to their community. Yeah, that's really a great value for families in our community. Uh, speaking of families, kids, wave. Hi, everybody. They're all, they're all outside right now. They're enjoying <laughs> They're enjoying this beautiful they're weather. They're going to need a shower after right. this. As we head back to Craig Flint in the studio, uh, Craig, we have a weather report. The sun has cracked through that light layer of clouds that have been with us for the first few minutes. It's really nice out tonight. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous out there, guys. It looks like a lot of fun behind you there with all the kiddos. Uh, and uh, those so, Matt, Megan, you are in great shape, and it looks like a lot of fun out there. Oh, oh, the sun good. gods are shining down upon yeah, us it's tonight. It's beautiful right now. Thank you. All right. Well, hey, you know, a great place to visit with your family, the Swan Pond. It's a wonderful place that you can go see those beautiful, majest majestic creatures. Yeah, even if you're just driving by through the village of Manly, you can't help but look over and enjoy them. Well, that's where our Tommy Sladek is tonight with more on the tradition of the swans in Manlius. Strolling through the village of Manlius, you're bound to see a sign or flag bearing a swan. Now, the swans here at this landmark pond, they're nothing new. 
The first ones were introduced 115 years ago. No stop in the village of Manlius is complete without a visit to the swan pond. It's a family favorite tradition, feeding the ducks and swans. They feel like the food. And watching the new babies grow up. And we come out this way and take our daily drives on Sundays, and it's just something we have to do. We have to stop here and feed the birds and see what swans are are born this year. Not a, a village street that you'll go down where there's not a swan or a decoration or somebody's mailbox or something. Everybody loves a swan. For more than 100 years, the Swan Pond has served as the village landmark. The town's mayor first introduced swans on the pond in 1905. Everybody's parents and grandparents have come to this place um, to feed ducks. I did it when I was a kid. My parents did it when they were younger. So it's just, it's great. For 113 years, dedicated caretakers watch over the birds, including David Seeger and Chris Sherwood from the DPW. You know, I, I enjoy making sure it's always looking nice. Yeah. And it's top notch, so people kind of look around and see what we do and, and appreciate the work of the DPW, really. You know, it's a lot of work. Along with help from the public, Seeger feeds the swans mixtures of cracked corn and a form of chicken pellets. And even though you probably did it as a kid, they ask people not to toss bread in the water. Yeah, their digestive systems can't handle the bread. Summer days are a big time for folks to flock to Swan Pond, not only for the great weather, but to see the babies. The caretakers say the swans have always breeded on their own. The young usually hatch after Memorial Day and will stay with the mom and dad until October or November. As cute as the little ones might be, Seeger says it's a bad idea to try to pet swans, especially the men who bite. Kind of yeah. like the zoo, look yeah. but do not touch. Right. Around the outskirts, people are honored and memorialized with donations of benches and plantings. Swans in a pond getting endless love from the community. Regular visitor Mary Sue Bergwin says her two favorite spots in Manlius go hand in hand. The swans and the ice cream down the street that we all end up to after we leave here. Well, the nearby ice cream place Mary Sue mentioned, that's the legendary snow top, and it's just a walking distance away. So Matt and Megan, I, I think it's my time to get fed. We'll see you over there. Coming up at 6 o'clock, reporting live in Manlius, I'm Tommy Sladak. Oh, it's so great. Every every time we go there, my kids say, can I have another quarter, another right, quarter right, to feed yeah, them? Yeah, you know, they yeah. love it. it but uh, look and don't touch is That's definitely right. a good model. You know, coming up as we continue our broadcast live here from Green Lakes, I'm going to take you out on the Erie Canal, which is really just about a mile, mile and a half from where we're standing right now for a ride on a kayak through nature. This wasn't any fun at all. No, it was great. <laughs> Welcome back to our Your Town broadcast, live from the Fayetteville and Manlius communities tonight. You know this area is filled with all kinds of recreational activities, perfect for families to get out and enjoy. One of the treasures is the Erie Canal, and it's a way that it winds through the town of Manlius, just outside the village of Fayetteville. Yes, it's really a, a natural treasure, but you go back to the Civil War era, that's when it was all built, man-made, and that's part of its charm. You know, just about a week or two ago, I took a kayak out with a, somebody with some expertise and traveled down the old Erie Canal. How am I doing? You're doing, you're doing excellent. Yeah. You're, you're a natural paddler. It's a good thing you're an athlete. You, you picked it up well. The old Erie Canal is a man-made historic treasure that winds its way through nature. Yet it sits just minutes away from the busy world of roads, retail, and reality. We're at Cedar Bay on the old Erie Canal. Uh, we're going to head east as far as you want to go. Frank Valls is an avid kayaker. He's taken on New York's lakes and rivers from the Finger Lakes to the Adirondacks. And pretty incredibly, we could go to Albany, theoretically. We could. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, that's remarkable. It yeah. kind of in the tradition of the Erie Canal. Correct. Know? He often takes out his boat alone, drinking the tranquility, observing the wild, and riding the wind. What do you love about doing this? I like the, uh, the freedom of being in control of my own destiny. And just hold it down, and then torso twist. If 
I've got a good instructor, I think, here. There you go. Frank has the experience and patience to develop my kayaking skills. Safety always first. The quiet canal current is an ideal place to learn. The history of being where we are is pretty cool, too, isn't it? I mean, we're in the middle of the transportation vehicle that made central New York and upstate New York, you know? Absolutely. And the whole barge canal system that, that grew out of it opened up the whole gate, the Great Lakes to the Hudson and beyond. As our boats get moving, the joy comes out. He's a good old worker <laughs> and a good old pal. 50 <laughs> miles on the Erie Canal. Good up hold, there, hold some barges in our day. We'll make room by 6 o'clock. I'm still looking for the mule named Sal, though, to help us get along here. I'm trying to figure out which way I'm going to go around that tree. I'll scooch over onto the right Looks side Looks like here. staying right would be a better move. The time flies as quickly as we navigate one section to the next. There you go. You're cruising. Good job, man. Thank you. I'm impressed. Very good. Good teaching. And a great experience kayaking the canal through Manlius. We've made it back. And that's the important thing. We did make it back safely. I got to thank Frank for taking me out on the canal. What a great experience in a different point of view. You know, instead of like walking or yeah, running, you're in incredible. the water. It, really nice. And this could be your new day job, my friend. Oh, I think so. Professional kayaker. I'd love it. I like I'd it. I love it. What a great way to go. <laughs> uh, still ahead tonight, we have a lot more to tell you about, including the American history here in Fayetteville. Maybe you already know, but which president made his boyhood home in the village of Fayetteville? We'll tell you. Also, from gourmet cupcakes to gourmet pizza, you can find it all in the FM community. We're going to sample some of that incredible mm, food, our favorite part of the show, as our Your Town coverage continues tonight live from the Fayetteville and Manlius communities. You're watching NBC3 News at 5.30. Well, welcome back to our special Your Town live broadcast series. Tonight, we are featuring Fayetteville and Manlius, the eastern suburbs of Onondaga County, and we're here live at Green Lake State Park. What a perfect place to be tonight. Yeah, the sun is shining down upon us. There's a nice, cool breeze, and we've got a lot of kids enjoying the water, a couple of them dancing and building sand castles. Somebody's been buried on the beach, too. <laughs> great use of the state park sand here. Uh, they're having a great time behind us throughout the night. This is one of the things that people who live in this area really love about this That's community. That's right, and uh, just recently, we came here to find out what people love so much about Fayetteville Manlius. We're here at Green Lakes, and that's a great spot. We come here very often to walk. Great camping here, the boating, the swimming, it's great. It's a beautiful area. Um, there are um, many activities to do around here that are very inexpensive. Uh, it's a great place to camp here. It's a great place to swim. Um. So that's one of many things they love about this community and coming to this area. You know, one of Fayetteville's most famous faces of the past served as president of the United States. Yeah, amazing to think that he got his roots right in the Fayetteville community. Yeah, he made his way from here to Buffalo and then a career in Washington. Grover Cleveland spent his child in the village of Fayetteville, went on to be elected president, two separate terms. His childhood's home still stands on Academy Street in the village. Cleveland and his eight siblings spent several years of their childhood here. And she was a pioneer during her day, and her contributions to the women's rights movement and beyond are still being recognized in the Fayetteville community today. We're talking about Matilda Jocelyn Gage, uh, a name that some of you might recognize, and if you don't, you're going to want to get to know her. She devoted her life to social issues and the liberation of women. Today, the Matilda Jocelyn Gage home in Fayetteville stands in her honor. Gage lived there with her husband and four children in the mid-1800s. She's a woman who encourages us to have the greatest courage we can to fight for justice. She's a woman who said, I think I was born with a love of liberty. 
Now, at the age of 27, I mean, think mm, about that. She was, wasn't even 30 years old. Gage spoke at the third National Women's Rights Convention in Syracuse. She was also an outspoken critic of slavery. Her home was a stop on the Underground Railroad. Another unique connection, Gage's daughter married Frank Baum. Hmm. He was the author of The Wizard of Oz. Now, there's also a little space tucked away on East Seneca Street in the village of Manlius. This land was originally home to a, a hail lumber yard going back to the 1800s. Yeah, incredible history there. It is also the birthplace of the Hollowick Candle Company. Now it has a new purpose while keeping its historic roots. Our Kelly Curtin tonight takes us to the yard. They have a cool old item. They might, they'll call me up and say, hey, you got a use for this? And, and uh, usually I find a spot for it. That spot is called the yard in Manlius. I like to repurpose things. And the creator, John Freitenberg. If you look around the property, there's all kinds of old motorcycles and scooters and, and Volkswagens and you know, and it's just fun to, to see that stuff. We're in an environment that's not in a junkyard or getting, you know, recycled. He's the owner of Ironwood Pizza in the heart of the village. Just up the street sits another one of his creations. Everyone that looked at this property wanted to tear all these buildings down. And I just saw the, I thought that would be a shame and saw the, 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 you know, the need for cool historic property rather than building new apartments or housing on it. He's worked for the past five years to restore the four acres into a place to gather for a good time. His hands have been hard at work first with this barn. It was about to collapse, but he brought it back to life to host special events. It's a combination of country and industrial, giving the space a unique, authentic atmosphere that has a ton of character. On the property, an old pizza truck, a fence decorated with old license plates from across the U.S., and a barn with tables made out of wood from a former bowling alley in Baldwinsville. Plus, it's the perfect place to stop by for a cup of joe. Coffee brings people together and so does other passions like riding motorcycles or working on cars and this kind of combines a lot of those things. Or a tasty treat at the motorcycle-inspired Ironwood Coffee Shop. It's this kind of feel that draws in people like Linda Haley from Canastota. It's not like every other place. It's not like every little drive through you forget about later. It's a true community place to hang out. You're invited. They want you to stay. They want you to hang out. They want you to meet people and interact. A place that blends elements and beans, like the homestead store filled with different trinkets, or the roaster that sits upstairs hard at work to carry the rich aromas through the shop. A vision brought to life, showcasing its historic roots. The places where people can gather and meet other people in a, in a casual, calming spot that uh, it doesn't exist anymore. And I thought that this would be a great place. It's right in the village. And, you know, people can come here and walk around and, and it's just a, a fun, relaxing place to get together. While people can ground their own roots in a spot that feels like home. Reporting in Manlius, I'm Kelly Curtin. You know, the Iowan Coffee Shop opens uh, Monday through Friday, 6.30 in the morning. On the weekends, they sleep in a little. Uh, they open at <laughs> they, eight, they They open at 8, so you can get your coffee then. And you know the owner's thinking about doing a Sunday morning special. Bring your motorcycle or old car. Great idea. And grab a cup of joe. I love it. Well, right now, we want to head back to the station where we have more news to report on today. Our Justin Page is back in our NBC3 studio. And, Justin, we're having a great time out here tonight. It looks like you are. It's gorgeous out there, Matt and Megan. And uh, I wish I was out there with you. Now we're actually going to head back out to Green Lakes where we have Matt and Megan working on our special Your Town show tonight. Hey, guys. No, oh, Justin, we wish you were here. We're yeah, we do. a great time well, I don't here. know if I made that clear last oh time. We gosh. really do wish you were here, Justin, and go for a swim or a run. Okay, so yeah. do you re take me back to when you were a kid, and I know that you have some great memories from this community. Suburban Park in Manlius, which was, by the way, hours and hours away from Liverpool, which is where we <laughs> grew up. As you know, a nine-year-old. Right. But right. if you went there with a good report card, and I suppose any report card, you either got in for free with your parents wow. or at a really reduced rate. And so there was an amusement park right in our backyard, And if you drive on Route 92, yeah. as if you're heading out towards the Casnovia Way, you look on the right-hand side, you'll see this apartment complex. It's the Suburban Park apartment complex. But if you live here long enough, like Matt, you remember when it used to be the Suburban Park Amusement Complex. Vince Giordano, of the, the owner of Snowtop, he actually got his start in the ice cream business there, running the ice cream stand, did you know? And he still has old 20-cent ride tickets from back in the day. He remembers when Suburban Park was filled with games and rides. It was an amusement park, yeah. Amazing, the acts that came in all the time. 
that they brought back in years ago. Um, you know, fireworks on the 4th of July. They had a big display of fireworks. Well, back then, the amusement at the amusement park, Giordano served just two flavors, chocolate and vanilla. Yeah, that works. They made milkshakes, snow cones, and candy apples. And really, I mean, what more do you need? It was really <laughs> a treat, no doubt about that. Now, the Manlius Art Cinema is also full of plenty of history, a great place to see films in the village. It's the oldest continuously operating theater in Onondaga County. It's built in 1918 as a silent film theater originally. In 1927, the theater was later converted to sound featuring longer feature films. We have a reputation for bringing good films to Manlius, and a lot of, uh, we have a very loyal clientele, very loyal customers um, who love film. The theater will celebrate its 100th birthday in December. They'll show five films, including E.T., Moonrise Kingdom in Bruges, Loving Vincent, and The Big Lebowski. That'll be fun. They'll be charging 1918 prices that day. So, how much is it, Megan? You 10 know? cents. Just 10 cents that. to get in. Get a popcorn, <laughs> too, while you're inside. All right, so still to come, I can hear your tummy rumbling, and mine is, too, because it's dinner time around here. So, coming up, we are going to sample some of the best stuff that Fayetteville and Manly has have to offer. And we're also going to be reintroduced to Shelby, the Wonder Dog, the pet with a pacemaker. It all started here at Green Lakes when Shelby collapsed while on a walk with her owner. We'll tell you her story when we come back. Welcome back to our special Your Town coverage live from Green Lake State Park tonight. This week we are exploring the Fayetteville and Manlius communities and there are so many great stories to share. And you never know what kind of connection you might make to a park or a location you visit. Uh, we have a special guest with us now, Casey McDonough, her dog Shelby. My wife Jamie here of the Shamrock Animal Fund too. And Casey, you were walking with Shelby here at the park last year, right? Yeah. But where were you when, when something happened? So about last February, we are walking over there, and she just got her feet wet and got very excited and started doing laps, and all of a sudden, my dog passed out and went completely unconscious. Wow. And That must have been terrifying. It's very scary, yeah. yeah. And, and so what did you do from there? I knew, something had, I knew something was really wrong, so I took her over to uh, a heart doctor and mm -hmm. she basically said Shelby needs a pacemaker so my next steps were trying to raise funds to get the pacemaker and that's when I met Matt and Jamie. Oh that's very nice yeah. and, and what Shamrock and, and everybody how did everybody pitch in to make this happen? So I started a GoFundMe and that kicked off and I shared it in a lot of Facebook groups where, who were, a lot of people were really nice and then you guys kind of like helped me reach the end goal of it. Yeah so, yeah and yeah. then and you end up at Cornell University yeah. and thanks mm -hmm. to Jamie and Wendy, Wendy yep. English down at Cornell. Yes. Yep. Uh, and we did the part. story yep. on Shelby, which yep. is amazing to be right nearby in the operating yep. room. And let's get let's get an update. How's Shelby doing? She's been great. We just went to Maine, and she was running up the mountain like <laughs> like a puppy. Wow. And then we took her to get a rabies shot not too long ago, and everyone was like, "How old is she? How old is she?" It's like eleven. They're like years old. They're all like. <laughs> Very surprised. Well, and so. you know, and you think about there are so many people in our community who need help uh, yeah. supporting their animals. They might come into a crisis situation yeah. like you. They don't have the funds to pay for it, and that is where Jamie and Matt, this wonderful charity you guys have put together, yeah. steps in to help so Seriously. many families. Jamie, it's exciting to, to see Shelby again, isn't it? Oh, and Casey, it, we don't always get to see the no, animals we help. It, it, it's just really um, heartwarming to see her looking so well and feeling so healthy yeah. and knowing that um, the Shamrock Animal Fund had some part of yeah, that. Yeah, and you know what? If people want to help, there's actually a great way that they can do that, and that's coming up this weekend. Yeah, this weekend on, on Sunday, there's a really fun event, Philanthropic Foodies Culinary Showcases, Sunday afternoon, 4 to 8 at the uh, Marriott Downtown Syracuse, the former Hotel Syracuse. Great chance to sample food from some of the best restaurants in the area, have maybe a beer, a glass of wine, bid on some items. And the good news is, Casey, that we're helping out the Shamrock Animal Fund. We're one of two beneficiaries, along with the Friends of Dorothy House, that'll uh, end up with some extra money in the bank after the event. So would you encourage people to, to support that? Definitely. It'll, it'll help a lot of people, a lot of families. And, and let's wrap this up. Tell me what Shelby means to you. Everything, absolutely everything. That's the only word, everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. enjoy the rest of your summer. Yes, now thank you're, you guys. You're off to college this year, yep. so, Jane, thanks for coming. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and I best love, of luck, you guys, with the tears. Don't you love the again. shamrock green? Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's beautiful, and it's going to be a great event this week, and we encourage everybody to come on out to support uh, these wonderful charities here. Thanks, yes. Casey, so thank much Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Much more coming oh up gosh. live from our Green Lakes Your Town broadcast as we continue in a moment.
All right. Well, Craig, thank you so much. Great weather out here tonight. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, we're enjoying summer uh, skies, although they look a little threatening, but we know that's just incidental. It's, that doesn't mean anything. All right, so now... We're focused on this food here. <laughs> yeah, right we're now. hungry. And our special guest, too, <laughs> That's Martha. right, Marsha Phillip. Uh, she is the vice president with the Manlius Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for being here. Oh, yes, thanks for having me. All right, so we're going to talk to you a little bit about what you love so much, but let's first uh, talk about the food because we've got some great stuff. We have Ironwood Pizza, authentic margarita pizza, and a mozzarella spiral. You know, and Matt, mm, I know you want to get in well, there. No, Listen, Nico's, Nico's getting ready for sports. All right, we'll give you, we'll hand it over. He doesn't even have a microphone on yet, but he's ready to eat. So let's put him to work. I mean, he's, this is where he So excels. how is it, Nico? <laughs> it's tasting good, right? Marsha, there are some Just wonderful places up here to, to oh, get a bite to eat, are. aren't there? Oh, there are. Mm, yeah. I mean, that's the oh, Lord, best thing about this area is the fabulous restaurants and shops, the local ones. Yeah. And um, the yep. beautiful lakes and waterfalls. And Marsha, you you use this park yourself. And this I, is like I your do. own backyard, right? I do. I golf what do you here. Do here. Yep, I golf. And um, in the wintertime, when the road is closed up to the clubhouse, we walk. Um, it's just, it's a fabulous mm. place. Yeah, it really, really is. It truly is. What else do people know about Manlius? Um, if they're maybe thinking of moving into the area, doing business in the area, what, what would you like them to know? I, you know, it's a great place to have a business. I had my business in Manlius for 17 years and now in Fayetteville for eight. And um, it's a beautiful place to own a home, many beautiful places. Mm -hmm. And um, as I said, the restaurants and shops and, and local and speaking, festivals. and speaking of restaurants, there's a great restaurant that you can find actually oh, right yeah. here at Green Lakes, Brian's Landing. Um, just recently renovated. They've got Nick, some that's great this meals. one right over here. Uh, if you want to get a shot of that. All right, so I know of, you want to get in there. Well, what do we have here? Well, it, it's clearly a filet. With, it's a blue cheese risotto on asparagus. I think I've got most of Yeah, that's it. And that boy, is delicious. boy, does it look delicious. I'm just going to cut a little piece and then maybe Nico. You know, you can see, oh, wow. Twist this my is, arm. Yeah. So, that's one of the great things our, about Green Lakes, It's our right? food test. Yeah. You can golf, and then you can get a little uh, bite. Yeah, and I got Absolutely. a little fork for you here, buddy. Yeah. It's a there great you restaurant, and you can eat outside, which is fabulous in the well, summertime to enjoy. Yeah, it's really become a hot ticket. It's, it's you know, they're, they're so busy, they've got a great problem on their hands. I know, they know? certainly do. Oh, All right, now, we, we would be remiss, Marsha, as you know, if we didn't talk about dessert. <laughs> oh, because yeah. Because we've got some oh, great things Oh, is that why you guys are skipping the food? You want to get right to dessert? we got to get right to dessert. Go right. These... I mean, gosh, these uh, handmade cupcakes, mm. they are just beautiful. This is from Mrs. Kelder's. We're talking about chocolate with vanilla, lemon blossom, red velvet, Irish car bomb, chocolate peanut butter, and cookie dough. Uh, also, a bunch of great cookies. All kinds of great treats in here. I love that. Um, why don't you Ooh. start on Marcia, one of those? you want to start? Oh, yeah. right, we'll we, also, we also have Cassie, Cafe Soleil from Fayetteville, a little plaza right near the, uh, what, used to, in there? what used to be Friendly's. Is, <laughs> here, Nico, eat this one, too. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what does Cafe Soleil have for us? Well, they, we've got a cranberry lemon muffin, mm. coffee cake, blueberry muffin, mixed Sky berry bread. scone. Uh, they're all baked in-house. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, mm, take a bite. Very good. And delicious. then this is a honey orange latte. Do you, do you taste that in that, that latte? That is delicious. Mm. That is really So wonderful. that's a, a great shop, uh, where Cafe Soleil, where you can yeah. get a cup of coffee. Mm. You can sit down very with good. your friends. You know, Delicious. that's one of the great places okay. uh, in Manlius and Fayetteville. There's a lot of little spots to gather with people, aren't there? Lots. You know, that makes a big yes. difference in the community. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yep, definitely. And what's so nice about it is these are all local. Absolutely. You know, I mean, there are local businesses here in this community that you can support. Oh, yes. And, you know, the chamber, there's a local chamber, and um, we support all the local companies and businesses and we shop local. Yeah, that's, that's right. great, Marcia. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Everybody brought the food tonight. We're going to enjoy it, and we'll be back with our live broadcast from Green Lake State Park in a moment. Mm. You're watching NBC3 News at 6. Welcome to Your Town Live, Fayetteville Manlius tonight, live from Green Lake State Park. We're enjoying a fantastic Friday evening along with our friends here in the Manlius and Fayetteville area and the kids swimming here at the lake. It's quieting down a bit now as we get a little later into the evening. Yeah, but it's a beautiful night out here tonight. Uh, the rain has held off, so we've had a beautiful evening out here. And now we've had a little snack, a little dinnertime mm. snack from all the delicious local venues here, those wonderful restaurants. And we are ready to kick into the weekend. Yes, uh, we really are. The weekend's underway. We're going to tell people about all the activities across central New York today, but we're focused on Fayetteville and Manlius tonight. Yeah, let's show you where it's located, Fayetteville and the Manlius community. 
communities are located on the east side of Onondaga County. Really beautiful communities out here. So family friendly, so much to do. Green Lakes, uh, it's really a wonderful place to come visit, you know, if you have some time with your family, maybe even this weekend. Good idea. You know, there's a butcher shop in Manlius that features farm fresh ingredients with a focus on supporting local. Side Hill Farmers is an old school butcher shop that came to life about five years ago now. All the meats are sourced from farms in Madison County. Uh, they're hormone and antibiotic free. In fact, the head butcher, Wesley Tennyson, says it's about keeping it local. People have sort of lost um, the connection with their food. Um, this store is, is kind of trying to bridge that, that gap that's sort of been built by, you know, the large scale producers. Um, they do the best they can, I'm sure, um, but it is nice to know that you know, your chicken was made basically in your backyard. Another part of the shop's mission, to use the entire animal, no waste, along with your standard cuts of meats like boneless ribeye and strip steak, you can get deli meats and sausages too. You know, it is a furniture factory in Manly is with a rich history. Stickley was started by Gustav Stickley in the Eastwood area in the 1890s. Then in the 1900s, Leopold and his younger brother, George, John George Stickley, bought and expanded an area already existing a factory in Fayetteville. It soon became a place to manufacture their own signature furniture. More than 50 years later, Leopold died and left the company to his second wife, Louise. She carried the company until 1974 when she was forced to go bankrupt or sell. That's when she reached out to a good friend, Alfred Audi, and his wife. Now their son, Edward, is the president of the company. My father and my mother really rebuilt this company. They saved it from the brink. And I think that in my father's wildest dreams, he, he wouldn't have believed it would be as successful as it is or grown as much. And he and my mother were just such a tremendous team. The company has expanded from 22 employees in the 1970s to three factories and 17 showrooms. The factory houses skilled crafters from around the world, constructing one-of-a-kind handmade pieces that are passed down from generation to generation. And from furniture that lasts generations to a brand new firehouse in Manlius, take a look at this 26,000 square foot facility for the Manlius Fire Department. Sits right on Route 92, open back in October. The front lobby features an antique fire engine, old fire pole, and some other fire artifacts. It's exciting. Uh, you get to meet people, you get to help. <clears throat> Usually when somebody calls, they need some help, they're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. So you get to change that, hopefully. Now the Manlius Fire Department has 11 full-time firefighters, five part-timers, and about 60 volunteers that make it all happen. They cover the village and town of Manlius, the town of Pompey, too, really critical to the safety of everyone who lives in this area. Our Your Town coverage continues live from Green Lake State Park coming up in just a minute. Uh, we are going to take you to Snowtop, one of the most popular places for families around the area. And we've been keeping an eye on the sky here over Green Lakes. We've seen some darker clouds, but Craig has been ensuring us throughout the afternoon we should be okay in terms of not having to worry too much about rain. And Craig, you've been right on the money. What's the latest on the forecast? Uh, well, uh, those clouds, I know. All right, Justin, thanks so much. We are still enjoying these delicious treats, red velvet or lemon. Film. A lemon would be my choice, All but right, they, they both look really good, <laughs> that's for sure. Coming up, it's not just cupcakes, but it's ice cream, a classic soft serve at snow time. Oh, can't wait for that. We are going to take you there and tell you about that famous trash can when we come back. Mm. Back to our Your Town Live broadcast. Fayetteville and Manlius are featured communities this week, and we've been live at Green Lake State Park over the last hour plus now. What a beautiful evening. Nice breeze in there, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, it's been wonderful. So we've had our pizza, we've had yeah. our steak, we've we had did. our cupcakes, and we've had uh, washed it down with some great iced coffee. <laughs> yeah. And now we're ready for more dessert. Well, we need dessert. We need, <laughs> we need a little bit of ice cream. And uh, we sent our Tommy Sladek in search of the best Manlius has to offer. And that, of course, is Snow Town. That's right. He is live at Snow Town tonight. Hey, Tommy. And Matt and Megan, when you're in the village, we're hearing this is the place to come get ice cream. A cold tree favorite of theirs, a trash can. No, we're not talking about this. We're talking about actual ice cream. Now, while I wait for my order, let's take you back in time with owner Vince Giordano to when this place first started serving vanilla and chocolate. 
chocolate. Big, small, young or old, when folks in Manlius want a cold treat. Flurry, Reese's Pieces. And chocolate vanilla swirl. The cotton candy. Snowtop is the spot to stop. Opens in the spring and you enjoy it all summer long and uh, it's just kind of a must do. Built in 1957, the walk up ice cream stand originally sold cones for nickels and dimes. Family owned for years and it's just kind of a landmark of manliness. Owner Vince Giordano bought the business in 1974. He says a lot has changed in 45 years. We only had two serving windows years ago. Yeah. We've got four. They only had two machines, one that had vanilla in it, one that had chocolate in it, a freezer with some other stuff that they had. That was it. Today, the 600-square-foot stand employs 20 dedicated workers, packed with the latest and greatest ice cream equipment. Gerardano says growing the business means thinking outside the ice cream box and having something for everyone. Of the fruit flavors that we run are totally dairy-free. The chocolate is lactose-free. But we have something for your diabetic, we can help you out. We, we got sugar free fudge, you got the sugar free yogurt, and you can have yourself your hot fudge sundae. The adult favorite? Turtle Sunday with vanilla ice cream, hot fudge, caramel, and pecans. As for the kid favorite? The trash cans. Trash can has got ice cream in it, it's got chocolate syrup, it's got peanut butter, it's got dirt, it's got a worm, it's got a face with eyes. Wait, did he just say dirt? Well, that's a snow top secret, Oreo crumbles. Shh, don't tell the kids. Giordano likes to joke with them, saying it's fresh dirt from the parking lot. Some of the kids, you do that, and they, they just go nuts. <laughs> snow top has been a staple in this community for years, and it's more than just ice cream. Giordano says it's been fun to watch generations of families enjoy his delicious treats. One of our favorite places to come, and we live in Northern Virginia now, so we're excited to bring our daughter back up here. What he finds most special, they keep coming back. You get so many people that have moved away. This is their first stop when they come back to visit. You know, they'll tell you that. We got to get it here. Then we're going to go with mom and dad or whoever they're going to go visit. But we got to have our ice cream first. With your ice cream in hand, a manliest tradition means heading over to Swan Pond. A lot of them, with the kids, they, got, they get their cones and they walk on down to see the swans and come back again. You know, yeah. that's, you know that, that's the way it is. The longtime owner says they love seeing new faces come up to the counter. Faces covered in chocolate, vanilla, and sprinkles because it's just that good. <laughs> now, perfect timing because I think my order just got finished being made. Nathan, thank you very much. I had to go with the trash can. I know it's a kid favorite. Adults like to go with the uh, uh, turtle sundae, but you just had to do it. I mean, dirt from the parking lot. It could be different in the parking lot. It would still be good. This is incredible. Matt and Meg, I'm going to try to save some for you guys. But for now, reporting live in Manlius, I'm Tommy Sladek. We're tossing back to Justin now. Well, welcome back live to our Your Town broadcast, Fayetteville Manlius, our featured communities tonight. We're live at Green Lake State Park where there's so much you can do. We've talked about golfing. Nico's going to mention that. There's camping up the hill. Yes. Our campsites are sold out pretty much. So I'm sort of thinking maybe we should get the crew. We start a fire. We can do some s'mores. Uh, yeah. Maybe make some dinner. We need, we, need, be a fun night. we need some campfire music too. And then looking down the lake too, people are out on kayaks on this beautiful lake. Uh, they, they can rent them here. They have the glass bottom now so you can yeah. see down into the water. Really a, a special place to visit. There is so much to do here. Very family friendly. Uh, as we toss it back to Craig in the studio a gorgeous night out here you know craig we were sort of holding our breath hoping that the weather would turn out. out the sun and the sun is, is here guess, shining craig. down <laughs> yeah you guys are lucking out out there because just to your east there's a little bit of a shower right now that's the forecast jp back inside thanks craig next in sports nico what's up Hey there, Justin. I'm Nico Tamuri and live at Green Lake State Park. When we come back in sports, we're celebrating, of course, sports in the Fayetteville Manlius area. And we'll talk more about one of the most fun stories this summer. It's all when we come back. NBC3 Sports is sponsored by Karuba Collision.
And nothing says summer like the beach at Green Lakes and Syracuse basketball. Good evening, I'm Nico Tamari and live at Green Lakes State Park. Of course, part of your town, Fayetteville Manly is, and you might have done a double take when I said summer Syracuse basketball, but the fact of the matter is, Bayheim's Army is putting the sport center stage for fans in Central New York right here in the offseason. It's pretty cool. It's a squad full of former Orange Stars all taking part in the basketball tournament. If they win four more games, they win a cool $2 million taking on Armored Elite in Atlanta tomorrow. John Gillen tells me, just like the Orange itself, tight games forging this team as it goes. I think um, these close calls make... Um, make your chemistry stronger as a team. I think we need games like that. It makes you uh, more comfortable with your teammates. You know you can trust them to do certain things, and that just gives you more confidence. The more confidence you have, the better you play. So I think that helps. It's Syracuse Orange football just around the corner as well. In fact, by this time next week, the Orange will be in training camp. Since we're here in the FM district, I caught up with my longtime friend and Orange Zone co-host Damian Rhodes for what SU football needs to do. Remember, Damian, top 10 all-time SU rusher. I think the biggest thing is health, right? You need Dungy to stay healthy and play all 12 games, and hopefully if he can play all 12 regular, that'll lead to a 13th. Um, I also think that, you know, we do have some shoes to fill. You know, you got Ishmael gone, or Phillips gone, our whole linebacking core is basically gone. Uh, so there's some shoes to fill, but the line's back, which is the most important thing. If you have a healthy line on both sides of the ball, it lets everything else become easier for everybody else. So I think that we are close. I think he's doing the right things. And I think a lot of it is, can Dungy stay healthy? If he can stay healthy and provide what he does um, for all 12 games, then I think we have a chance. Rhodes leading FM to a Section 3 football championship in 2001. The Hornets had an undefeated regular season when he was back at head coach in 2013. Damian tells me what this town means to him. We said that, you know, everywhere I got in my life is because of where I started, which was an FM, um, whether it was Pop Warner, whether it was going to kindergarten at Mount Road or Edna's Road Elementary, Eagle Hill Middle School, uh, and then obviously the high school. Uh, that, that set the foundation for me to have doors opened up and... You know, I've, I've always been one to say that, you know, because of FM, I got to get to where I got to get to in my life and accomplished every dream and goal that I've ever had. It means a lot coming from a man like Damien. Now, sports success, as far as Hornet pride is concerned, goes well beyond the gridiron. There are so many sports in the district that do well, both locally, statewide, and even nationally. And when we mention nationally, we're talking about that cross-country team that's won all of those national championships. The best in the nation, they're already in the greater Syracuse Sports Hall of Fame. Lacrosse teams, Megan mentioned, always among the best. The girls winning a regional title last year. The boys won Section 3 in 2016. Jeff Hammond's soccer team, always among the best as well. No secret that FM Sports set the bar high in central New York. And it's all about that foundation, like Damien said, proof of that. Three Little League teams in the area won District 8 titles. And finally, though, we're going to take the athletic skills down quite a bit here because hey, hey, hey. since we're here at Green Lakes, we decided we wanted to test out Green Lakes Golf Course, the Robert Trent Jones design, a beautiful thing. Matt insisted we walk. I was okay with it because it's beautiful, but boy, that ninth it hole, a, that's a steep hill. a walk hill. in the park. A walk ah, in the park. He's saying that because he won. He's saying that because he won. It truly is, <laughs> but what a, what a treasure to have it in our own backyard. As you said, a Robert Trent Jones yeah. design. It's a gorgeous course, great layout, great exercise too. Definitely. All right, it, listen, invite me next time, will ya? Sure. Absolutely. I Ready swing to tee and off? miss and swing and miss, but occasionally I do make contact with the <laughs> Well, then you would fit right in with our crew. <laughs> yes. That is our Your Town broadcast live. I appreciate you joining us. Yeah, thanks so much, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you tonight at 11.